Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue talking about uh, sections 4.1 and 4.2. The topics are pretty related here to, uh, together for, for, the, for the first two sections at least. And then 4.4 is, uh, is another section that we'll do at the end. Um, so uh, where we had left off in the last video was um, we were just kind of going over some terminology. Um, the, the, uh, the, the thing that we're studying is linear regression. Okay, and so... So what that what that is is it's a you're going to make a scatter diagram you're going to make a, a you're going to plot points like you would in the algebra class plot points x y and then you're going to um, draw a line that best fits the data okay now I, now I can draw a line anywhere okay I can draw a line like like this I can draw a line like this I no the 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 regression line is the best fit line there's only one line that is the best fit for everything. Okay, and um, so we went over some terminology and um, uh, what it means to be positive or negative or a positive association or a negative association. So if the line is slanted in the positive direction, you're going to have a positive relation. If it's slanted in the negative direction, you're going to have a negative relation. Okay. Um, the residual or error is the difference between the actual value of y and the predicted value of y hat for a given x value. Okay, that is the residual equals y minus y hat. Uh, the residual represents how, how close our prediction came to the actual observation. Uh, in general, the smaller the residual, the better the prediction. Okay, we don't like, you know, large errors. Okay, um, an underestimate means that the residual is positive, and the and the um, and an overestimate means that the residual is negative. Okay, uh, the residual of zero means that the prediction is right on. Okay, so what what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to draw a line that best describes the data, and the residual is uh, is the um, the difference that a, a y value is from the y hat value. Okay, um, so I, an, an underestimate means that the residual is, is positive. Um, that means that the residual is, uh, is ab above the regression line. Okay, and uh, an overestimate means that the residual is negative. Okay, there is, so, the, so the data value is below the, the regression line. Um, let's take a look at an example here, which should hopefully help explain what I'm talking about here. Um, properties of the regression line. So the regression line, y hat equals b sub 1 times x plus b sub 0. Remember that's the same as y equals mx plus b. It's just we're using different symbols. Is the, the line that minimizes the sum of the squares of the residuals. For this reason, the, res, the regression line is also called the least squares regression line. In other words, the least squares regression line for a graph shown to the right is the line where d sub 1 times or d, d sub 1 squared plus d sub 2 squared plus d sub 3 squared plus all the way up to d sub 7 squared is equal to the least possible value. Um, an interesting property of the regression line is that the line will always contain the point x bar y bar. So x bar is the sample mean of the x's, y bar is the sample mean of the y's. This property is useful when we want to draw the regression line by hand. Okay, so um, what we have here on the uh, on the uh, right is is a graph. Okay, and I've got the um, uh, here's um, here's uh, the the actual values. Okay, and um, and the um, the the residual is is how far away from the line you are. Okay, so here's the regression line. Um, a line passing through uh, uh, or, uh, uh, the, the line of best fit. That's what I'm calling it. Okay, and um, so the regression line is is only gonna be one line where the sum of the squares of the residuals is the least possible value. Okay, so d sub one squared plus d sub two squared plus d sub three squared plus that's all. All up to d sub seven squared. That's gonna be a, the, the least possible number. So, so what I mean by that is, is I like I could draw a line anywhere on this. Like I could, I could draw a line like this. I could draw a line like this, right? It's just 
that's not going to be where the where the where the some of the um, the uh, residuals is uh, is as least as possible. Okay, so this line is only be one line, is what I'm saying. Okay, now um, here's a line passing through two points, d sub one, and uh, or, uh, the the actual value, um, and then uh, the actual value here. Okay, so um, and um, you know that, that that's not what I'm, talking, what I'm talking about though. I'm not talking about a line that's passing through two points. Okay, and that's something that we can easily find in algebra class, and that's something that you learned about in algebra class. So um, the the uh, the least squares regression line is a specific line. It's only one one line that's going to best fit the the entire data set. Okay. Um, the line is always going to contain the point x bar y bar. Okay, and that that's going to be important later for when we draw the line by hand. Um, Let's take a look at uh, problem seven. It says for a particular exam in a statistics class, the equation y equals 6.333x plus 53.058 was found to predict a student's test score y for studying x hours. Okay, in your own words, explain what the slope and the y-intercept of this equation represents. Okay, the slope um, is 6.333. What does that mean? Okay, it means for each hour of study, the test score increases by 6.333%. Okay, so a, a, a positive slope means that you're increasing, a negative slope means that you're decreasing. Okay, and uh, 6.333 is the same as 6.333 divided by 1. Okay, so that's where I'm getting that each hour of study, um, the test score increases. Um, the y-intercept would be the, um, uh, you know, so, so what does that mean where uh, the, the line crosses the y-axis? Or when x is zero, what, what does that mean? Well, if a student studies for zero hours, x is zero, the test score would be 53.058, okay, if x is zero. That would be a translation of, of what I mean by talking about the y-intercept. Okay, so the y-intercept is the point where the, where the line crosses the y-axis, okay, and, or when x is 0. Always think of uh, finding the y-intercept when x is 0, okay? Um, problem 8 says that Ted Williams played for the Boston Red Sox from uh, 1939 to 1960, uh, many people believe that he was the greatest hitter of all time. Unfortunately, his career totals are somewhat less impressive than others because his career was interrupted two times, once from 1943 to 1945 because of World War II, and then again from uh, 1952 to 1953 because of the Korean War. And uh, some people believe that if he had been playing baseball during these years, uh, that he would have broken Hank Aaron's home run record of uh, 755, and um, and runs batted in record of 2,297. Okay, uh, Williams ended his career with uh, 521 home runs and uh, 1,839 RBIs. Uh, his statistics are given below. Okay, the numbers that are in bold indicates the number that he was in the war. So the the the, the five years that I'm talking about here is 1943, 1944, 1945, 1952, and 1953. He was in the in the war now, he, 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 there's there's some information in 1952 and 1953. Um, we're going to assume that those are zero, okay, or that he didn't play at all, okay. Cause we're, we're basically going to come up with new numbers here to to, to represent um, what we think his his home run production and RBI production would have been, okay. Uh, part A, complete the scatter diagram treating year as the x values and home runs as the y values. Do not plot any points from the war years. Does there appear to be a relation between the two variables? Okay, so basically I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna plot these points here. So 1939, uh, he hit uh, 31 home runs. Okay, so I'd plot a point there. 1940, he hit 23 home runs. So I'd plot a point right there. 1941, he hit uh, 37 home runs. I'm going to plot a point right there. 
1942, he hit uh, 36 home runs, okay, and et cetera. So I'm, I'm skipping right over anything that's in bold, okay, so I don't plot any points from 1943, 1944, 45, and also 1952 uh, and 1953, okay. Uh, so this is what I'm looking at, and uh, now does there appear to be a linear relation between these two variables. In other words, does, does a line look like it does a good job at representing the flow of uh, the scatter diagram or, or not really? Okay, well, I would say not really. Now I can change the, the, the scales and the axes to be whatever I want, okay? And so I, I, you know, I, there's you know, ways to manipulate this, but, um, but the fact is like in, in 1959, he only hit 10 home runs. Okay, and that's that's way below his production. Okay, um, what, what you know what what he normally did. So in 1949, for example, he had 43 home runs. Okay, that's so there's a large gap going on there. Okay, now that's going to affect our calculations. So I would say that there does not appear to be a linear relation. So in other words, if if I were to draw a line on this scatter diagram, I, I think a line does a poor job at representing the flow of what's going on, okay? And that's, that's just based upon the, you know, the scatter diagram and, and what I see there, okay? So, uh, let's see, in part B, it says, excluding all the data from the war years, fit a linear regression line, y hat equals b sub one times x plus b sub zero to the data regarding the number of home runs. Then we're going to use this equation to predict how many home runs Williams would have hit in each of the war years. What is the correlation coefficient? Is this a good prediction? And the ultimate question, uh, would Ted Williams have broken Hank Aaron's all-time home run record? Okay. So what I'm going to do here to, uh, to get this information that I've got is I'm going to use my calculator. And uh, by the way, a lot of what we do in, in Chapter 4 is going to be on the calculator, just a, a heads up with that. Um, so uh, on the uh, 84 model, if I hit Stat and then Enter, okay, and I, I, all I'm doing is uh, answering the, the, the question about the, the home runs for now. Okay, so RBIs are, are not till later. Um, so would, would Ted Williams have broken Hank Aaron's home run record if he had been playing? Okay, that's, that's the ultimate question there. So in L1, I'm going to type in the year, uh, type in the full year, 1939, 1940, 1941, and I skip over anything that's in bold. Okay, so I skip over 1943, 1944, 1945, 1952, and 1953. Okay, and uh, I've got the um, home run totals in each of the... Um, uh, uh, values uh, get given to me uh, uh, entered in this li in, in these lists. Okay. Ma by the way, make sure that you're using L1 and L2. If you're not using L1 and L2, your 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 calculator doesn't know that. Okay, and you have to tell the calculator how to do that. Um, so uh, if I hit Stat and I go over to Calc. And I, this time I want number four where it says uh, Lin Reg X plus B. Okay, and I hit enter and I hit enter again. Okay, now on some of your screens, you might say Y equals AX plus B, A equals a number, and then B equals a number, and then it, you don't see R squared and R. Okay, what that means is that your diagnostic on key is not on, and so you'll have to turn it on. So if I hit second catalog, and I scroll down to where it says Diagnostic On. So the reason why I'm not seeing the R value is because my Diagnostic On key was not on. Once it's on, it's on forevermore until you turn it off, okay? And so you, 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 every time you do this, you'll be able to see R squared and R, okay? So I hit Stat, go over to Calc, and then number four, hit Enter, and hit enter again, okay? And uh, A is uh, point, or negative point four zero two times X plus uh, B is 813.785, okay? 
Okay, that's rounding the nearest uh, three digits. By the way, it makes a difference where you're rounding. Okay, so like if I round to the nearest three digits versus the nearest uh, seven digits, uh, you know, I, I might be off by like a, a home run or so, and um, or or, or maybe or maybe more than that. Okay, and so that that could make a difference. Um, the R value is uh, approximately negative 0.367, if I go near as three digits on that. Okay, and by the way, the R value, that's a lousy number. Okay, remember the closer that you are to one or negative one, the better. The closer you are to zero, the worse. Okay, so this R value, negative 0.367, that's closer to zero than it is negative one. Okay, well that's not surprising to me because of what we just said there, that uh, a line does not appear to, to do a good job at representing the flow of the information. Okay, so there does not appear to be a linear relation. Okay, now this number here verifies that for us. Okay, it, it verifies that our, our, our thought was correct on that. Um, and so uh, this is not a good prediction. Okay, uh, now, I, I, I still want to know, is, is he going to break this record? Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to treat uh, this line here that I found as an equation in terms of x. x is uh, the year that he played. Okay, so the first year that he did not play was 1943. So I'm going to say um, negative 0 0.402 times... 1943, okay, and then plus 813.785, okay, and there's what I get. Okay, now for what we're doing, so he, he can't hit .699 home runs, right? This is not, it's, it's either a home run or it's not a home run. So we would round this to be uh, approximately 33 home runs is what we think he would have done if he would have played in the in the year 1943, okay, and then I uh, do the same thing. Uh, I type in 1944. Oops. Okay, and uh, so 32 home runs is what I get there, and then 1945. Okay, 32 home runs it looks like, and then uh, 1952. Uh, looks like 29 home runs, and then 1953 uh, looks like 29 home runs is what I'm getting. Okay, now we're, by the way, we're, we're never going to know what coulda, shoulda, you know, and anything happened because because he didn't play. Okay, so the, these are just predictions based on what we think. He would have done, you know, based on, on, on the numbers that, that we have throughout his entire career. Um, now we want to know, is he going to break this record? Okay, well, um, so he hit uh, 512, uh, 21 home runs total. If I subtract 1 and subtract 13, that would be 507 home runs total. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I've got some new numbers here for these years. I don't want to include these. Um, and so 507, okay, plus 33, plus 32, plus 32, plus 29, plus 29, gives me 662. So would he have broken Hank Aaron's record if he had been playing? Uh, no. So Hank Aaron hit uh, 755 home runs. Um, and uh, so it looks like he would have been, you know, pr pretty well shy of that. Um, so I, I say, uh, no, he would not have broken the, the, the all-time home run record, okay, e even if he was playing, all right? Um, and by the way, now, what, one thing that, uh, that uh, I, I could ask the question is, uh, why in the world are, 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 we, are we using this regression line when we have a poor correlation coefficient? Why are we doing that? Okay, well, because it really doesn't make sense for a line to fit this information, right? 
The line does a poor job at fitting the flow of what we see here in this scatter diagram. So why in the world are we using this line to make predictions about how, what, what he could have done? Okay, somebody could ask us that, and we would have no reply back because the numbers are what they are. Okay, but you know, it's just something to ask. You, you know, um, and, and and by the way, the the rounding here now didn't make an, a a difference in in this example, but some examples it might. You know, if if I would have gone to like the nearest uh, seven digits out, okay, maybe maybe that affects it by one or two home runs, okay. Which uh, you know, it, for for this example, it, it didn't matter, okay. But uh, other examples, it might, okay. So if it matters, yeah, you you, you want to use the, uh, like all the digits possible, okay. Um, why don't we stop the video right there, and I'll do part C then in the next video.